there. This is Jake with Reverb. I'm here to talk to you guys today about some of my favorite John Paul Jones bass lines. And most of you are probably familiar with John Paul Jones for his work with Led Zeppelin, or maybe more recently with the supergroup Them Crooked Vultures. He came from a very musical family. He got his start as an organist and choir master at his local church in England by the age of 14. From there, he was a prominent session musician and arranger in England in the 60s, where he later met Jimmy Page. And the rest is history. Paul Jones bass playing on this song is some of my favorite bass playing on recording. This figure that he's got right off the bat where he outlines this sort of power chord thing and then this D major triad is like a whole workout in and of itself, but it doesn't sound flashy in the way that like most bass etudes would, right? It, it's grooving, it drives the song, it holds everything together, it's awesome. Maybe my favorite part on the whole recording is what happens going into the bridge when he plays this bass fill over a B chord. He's got this wonderful descending chromatic line and then he includes the major third of both the B and the F sharp. Creating this kind of funky half step sort of feel. But it's what happens after, the way that he takes that idea and he develops it as part of the figure over the F sharp minor in the later half of that section. So he's taking this moment of interest where, the, where your attention is really drawn to the bass and he's carrying that through the rest of the song without getting in the way like any good bass player should. Now let's take a look at the Lord of the Rings inspired Ramble On off of Led Zeppelin II. John Paul Jones was very inspired by a lot of the Motown players, a lot of the soul music that he was growing up on. This bass line really feels indicative of that, right? There's this really wonderful sing-songy sort of pentatonic figure that we've got. Right? Now, harmonically speaking, there's not a whole lot going on in this song. It's just two chords. It's just E and A pretty much for the whole time. So one of the coolest things about it is the way that he plays with the range of the bass as well. He's got this melody, this like higher figure during the verses, going into the pre-chorus to help drive it forward. He switches to the lower end. And then in the chorus, we go back up again to a higher part of the instrument to play off of this 16th note figure that we've been hearing Bonham do for most of the song. Now 
Now, similar to good times, bad times, this figure here on the chorus requires a certain degree of technical facility on the instrument to play. So it's a really good exercise in and of its own right to focus in on. Let's take a look at another song off the same record, What Is and What Should Never Be. To what castle I will take you Well, what's to be the same You can really hear the Motown influence in what he plays over the verse on this song. Just like the last one, there's this really singable pentatonic melody. But it doesn't get in the way, right? It's, it's just this nice background melody to sit underneath what Robert Plant is doing. You can really hear his ear for arranging as a bass player on this song. Now, what he plays going into the chorus is really cool. There's this quick little fill, and then he goes from melody to just pure bass mode. And sometimes for me, as a bass player, I like to think of the octaves, or like a higher and lower line, kind of like kick and snare on the drums. Now, like any good bass player, John Paul Jones played both with his fingers as well as with a pick. One of the things that I love so much about the sound that he got out of the bass with the pick is that he didn't use it so much for clarity as to just get like a nasty, nasty tone like you hear in the beginning. Right? It's just there to just whack the crap out of the instrument and make this really fat, low, sort of growling kind of sound. As far as the whole rhythm section is concerned too, this song is really kind of like a precursor to a lot of heavy metal. Everybody is playing and beating out the same exact rhythm together, that chuggy. And you can hear the drums in it. There's kind of like a kick drum implied in every single beat. And if you listen to the recording, John Bonham is playing every single one of those notes. It's awesome. Now, as far as the chorus goes, I get a lot of people who ask me, what's the point of practicing my scales? I'm never gonna use them in that context. Well, this verbatim is an A major scale right at the start of the chorus. And then he moves up, we get a B mixolydian, C mixolydian, and then this nice chromatic walk up. Moral of the story is practice your scale. always remember Led Zeppelin as like a prog band and John Paul Jones was one of the leading voices in the band bringing that sort of like mixed meter madness to their songs. When you really take a step back and listen to this song, it's complete chaos, right? Without 
John Bonham's steady four on the floor sort of beat, it's so hard to tell what is even going on. And it's, that's what's so great about it. beginning of that figure, we've got this odd phrase. It's, it's groupings of nine eighth notes. And so it snakes over the bar line in this really cool way before it comes back to line up just before we call the main riff again. And if you listen to the recording, the phrasing that Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones have against John Bonham's drums is insane. They lay it so far back behind the beat at the tail end of that phrase before they go back to the main riff. That was a very small sample of some of my favorite John Paul Jones bass lines. We didn't get anywhere near covering all the stuff that we could. So if you had any favorites that we didn't get to, please let us know in the comments. This is Jake with Reverb signing off. See you next time.